Hello everyone, in this demonstration I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful and very stylish spiral necklace incorporating the star of the show, the gecko beads. Now as well as the gecko beads, in this particular necklace I'm using four other seed beads. I'm using in size 8 a gunmetal and a Ceylon ivory and in 11 I'm using a smoky grey and a gunmetal. Okay, there's no wrong or right reason behind any of the combinations. It's all about experimenting. But for this particular necklace, I thought I'd just guide you through the particular beads that I've used. Now, one of your eight O's, this gunmetal colour, I'm going to be using as my core bead. And then the other three sizes and colours I'm going to be using to form what are called the arcs, which are going to give you this amazing spiral definition. Okay. And then also to finish, I've used a couple of jump rings and a bolt ring clasp. But again, particularly, it's up to you whichever clasp you decide to use. So I'll just pop that to one side. Now, you will use a lot of thread for this particular necklace. Um, so it's best to just start with a comfortable length. I find probably about six foot, just under two metres, is a nice length. And I'm using a size 12 tulip needle and a black satin fire line. So the first thing we need to do is we will need a stopper bead for this. So I'm going to use one of the smoke grey 11 O's and I'm going to pop that on my needle and I'm going to slide it down. And you need to leave quite a long tail for this because if you're not going to use your spiral all the way around to the back of the neck, you will need a, a quite a decent length of thread to attach beads to. So I'm going to leave a good 20 centimetres and I'm going to pop on my stopper bead. Okay, so that's now, so what's going to happen at the end, that'll just slide off, and then you will use this piece of thread that you have here, if I just bring across the necklace, to pop on a bead selection of your choice, if you didn't want to continue the spiral all the way around to the back of the neckline. So the first thing we need to do is we need to decide on our core bead, and as I've mentioned, we're going to use the gunmetal 8 -O. So the first thing I'm going to use for this, and again it's all about experimenting, but I found this is a really nice place to start, is I'm going to pick up five of our gunmetal beads. So this is your 8 -O. I'm going to slide those down so it meets the stopper bead at the bottom of our piece of work. Then I need to decide on the combination of beads for our arc. So we won't be using those 8 -Os again, only for the core. So I'm going to pick up the following combination. I'm going to start with two gunmetal 11s, then a smoke grey, then I'm going to pick up a white 8 -O, a gecko bead, which I've gone for a black, and then I'm going to repeat this little combination in reverse. So I'm going to pick up a white, a smoke grey, and two gunmetal. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that combination of beads if I just pick this up. So there's my core section. I'm going to take my bead that I've just popped on my needle around the back and I'm going to take my needle up all five of that core bead. So then when I pull that through, I'll just lay that down for you. So you can see I have my core section along the top of my five gun metal and then I have my selection of beads that I've just popped on the needle which is going to be my arc. So from now on, every single combination of beads will be exactly the same as this arc. Okay, so it's quite a nice idea just to have them laid out on your bead mat. So as I mentioned earlier, we need to start every row with a core bead and then our arc. So we've placed on already our five core beads. So this is what's going to happen every single move from now on. We're going to pick up one of our core beads, which will be the same colour, that gunmetal. We're going to slide that down so it reaches your core. So there's your original five plus the new one at the end. So I'm going to pick up my arc combination. So we've got two gunmetal, one smoke, one white, one gecko, and then we're in reverse, white, one smoke, and two gunmetal. Now do you remember, when we did our first arc, we took the needle up all five of our original bead section. We've just added one. Do you remember, we added our first core bead, 
but we're only going to take the needle up the top five. So we're going to miss that first one. So as long as you realise from now on, we're going to be taking our needle up through the top five, the last five, missing the first one. Okay, so we've got that in position. I've threaded on my, my arc section. So I'm going to take my needle up one, two, three, four, five, missing the last one. Taking the needle up through, pulling nice and tight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, at the moment, there's our two arcs opposite. We're going to take our new arc and we're going to flip it round so it meets its partner on the other side and pull nice and tight. And then we've got those two arcs sat next to each other. Okay, so we do the next row. We're going to pick up our core bead. We're going to slide that down so it meets the core. So now we have seven core beads, but remember we're only going to take our needle at the last five. Okay, so we're going to pick up our combination. So two gunmetal, one smoke, one white, one gecko, one white, one smoke, and two 11-0 gunmetal. Okay, so we're going to pick up our section. We're going to sew up the last five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to take the needle back up through all Five. Now this is why it's a really good idea to use a size 12 needle because as you can imagine we'll be going to be going to be doing five passes through each bead so it's really good that you have a smaller thinner needle. We're going to take our section through so there's our next arc we're going to pop it round so it meets its partner and we're going to pull nice and tight and what we want you see we want this last 11-0 to sit away from the core. If it does happen to sit on top, just give it a helping hand just to pop it to one side. So that's three. As you can already see, they're starting to form the spiral just after three sections. So we'll just do a couple more. So I'm going to lay my spiral down. I'm going to pick up our core bead and we're going to slide that down so it meets. So it meets. Then we're going to pick up our next arc. So okay, same combination. Two gunmetal 11, one smoke grey, one white, one gecko, one white, one smoke, and two gunmetal. We've already got our five on there. So I'm going to take my needle. And as I say, keep all your arcs to the left in the same, really butting up against each other. One, two, three, four, five. Take our needle up through the top. All the way up through the five. The arc will sit on the right. We flip it round the back to the left and then pull nice and tight making sure that last bead is away from the core. So as you can see already we've started to form that beautiful spiral shape. Okay, I'll do one more and then I'll talk you through how we finish. So one core bead sliding down. Then we pick up our arc, which is two, one, one, one gecko, one, one, and two. When you're deciding on the combination of your arcs, it's always best to start small and then get larger, your largest bead on the inside, and then work down small again. If you do it in reverse or you do the same size, you won't get the same spiral effect. So we're just going to pop those down. It's going to take our needle up the top five. So it's always the top five. One, two, three, four, five. Insert our needle and take it up through the five. Slide it up. We've got our arc on the right. Pop it round to the back. And then we pull nice and tight. So there's five already, and you can already see we've got the spiral starting to form by magic. It's beautiful, and because we're doing the same technique time after time after time, that spiral will happen all on its own. I have had no bearing at all in making this happen. So you're just going to continue and continue and continue. As I said, if you wanted to a full-length necklace, you will have to add thread as you're going, but on my Guest Designer Facebook page, I've already had a popped on a little post there showing you how to add thread to design, so you might find that useful. So you're just going to keep going until you have your completed piece, 
And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide off my stopper bead, pop on a needle, and then sew on a combination of beads. If I bring the one I've completed across, as you can see. So this was this was one end. I've taken off the stopper bead and then I've threaded on a combination of beads. And what I've simply done is I've tied on a bolt ring clasp to this end. And then with the other end, I've replicated it with the same combination and same number of beads. I've tied on a jump ring large enough to take the bolt ring, which has given it a really nice finishing. But as I said, if you have the inclination, you can just keep going with the spiral all the way to the very end. And that make a beautiful, beautiful, very comfortable, very lightweight necklace. But as I said, as you can see from the, from the piece I'm showing, it's a very glamorous necklace. And that spiral does it all by itself. What could be better? Hope you enjoy and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.